Hi guys, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to turn a regular empty beer can into an alcohol burning beer can stove. So I had to ask myself, does the world really need another video about how to make alcohol burning stoves out of beer cans? Probably not, but you know what? I'm doing some research on stoves and fuels because I'm working on a book and uh, I realized I hadn't made an alcohol burning stove out of a beer can. I don't know why I haven't. Uh, I'm very interested in alcohol stoves. I've made others and it's not like I don't have enough beer cans laying around. So the process is really simple. Uh, they're fun to make, they're fun to burn, and uh, I learned a few things in the process that I thought I'd share with you. So this is what you're gonna need for the beer can stove. First, a nice tall boy beer can from your local brewery. Empty it as you see fit. Then a couple blocks of wood. I like to use a two by four and a half inch piece of plywood. And you're gonna need a thumbtack. You're gonna need a blade from a utility knife and a utility knife. A Sharpie helps some long nose pliers, and some tin snips or a good sturdy pair of scissors. Step one is to use the thumbtack to poke jet holes into the beer can. About uh, 5 eighths of an inch down from the top or right where the uh, first bend in the can is works really well. I got a little bit lucky with the can I'm using because it has a great uh, pattern on the top that helps me make nice even holes. If you don't have that, um, just grab some masking tape, put a, a strip of masking tape around your can, mark the beginning and end, take that tape off, mark out some even graduations, and put that tape back around your can and uh, you'll have a way to uh, mark nice even holes. The pattern that I'm following um, allows me to fit 26 nice even holes all the way around the can um, and I find that's a, a good density of holes for the jets. Next we're going to want to remove the lid from the can. We're going to do that by using the utility knife and we're going to score a line all the way around. Um, you don't want to apply too much pressure. It looks like I am but I'm not. I'm just trying to score uh, the inside of that little lip there and uh, each time I make a pass I rotate the can and uh, try and score a little deeper. I find that putting the can on the table and rotating it as you uh, pull the knife uh, around uh, works really really well. You just want to keep scoring lightly all the way around and eventually you're going to find that that knife will uh, occasionally poke through in a few places. Uh, keep working it a little bit longer and uh, in no time at all, it'll be ready to pull out with a pair of pliers. That's probably the most time consuming step uh, and it only takes a few minutes. The inside of the lip may be a little bit sharp, so if you want to, you could uh, sand that down and you could also sand down the uh, inside of the jets because they might have small burrs on them. It's ready for the next step. Next we're going to use the block of wood and the blade and we're going to score a line around the uh, can. I'm using a 2x4 block of wood because that's an inch and a half from the bottom and I'm going to add the half inch piece of plywood for two inches and we're going to score two inches from the top. So we're going to apply the same principle we did um, with the lid of the can and that is we're going to do some gentle scoring all around the can uh, not applying a lot of pressure just trying to make a scoring cut so that we eventually uh, will get through the can. I find it works well to score a little from the bottom and then switch to the top. Here I'm going to add that uh, half inch piece of plywood and I'm going to hold that blade down with a, a third block of wood and I'm going to uh, score the top. It's it's good idea to score the top and bottom alternating and uh, that way um, you'll sort of break through both the top and bottom at about the same time. I find adjusting the blade is important. Uh, a nice uh, shallow cut like that is, is great. No time at all you're going to start to uh, break through 
Here I'm breaking through the, the top of the can. Once you break through in a, a couple of places, you want to switch and make sure the other end of the can, in this case the bottom of the can, um, is scored as equally deep. So you're going to want to turn here until you start breaking through uh, about as often as you do the top part of the can. And there we go, we're, we're getting pretty close. Once you've scored through most of uh, both lines of the can, you can uh, probably just pull it apart gently, uh, pushing on the on the on the uh, scoring line and uh, twisting a little bit. Uh, both parts should come apart fairly easily. And there you go. You've got three parts of your uh, beer can. So what we've done is we've taken our beer can and we've cut it into three parts. And we're going to cut down that middle part and shrink it and then reform the can. We're basically going to push the top and bottom together until we have a smaller can with both an inside wall and an outside wall. So we're going to take the middle section of the can and cut it up its side. I'm going to follow the line on the side of the can. If you don't have that, you can uh, make your own with a straight edge. So inside the top of the can there's a bit, little bit of a lip and what we're going to do is we're going to take our middle part and uh, fit it into that little lip. That'll size our inner wall. Now you can see how the middle section of the can is going to give us that inside wall. I'm going to make sure I have a good fit and then mark the inside of the can. And uh, then I'm going to cut a strip close to that mark part way in, just, just halfway. I'm going to flip it around and then uh, cut the other side in the same place again halfway through. Then I can fit these two pieces together so they hold it holds itself in place. And I'm just going to do one last dry fit to make sure everything is good. Looks like a good fit. Just going to pull that out and then cut off the little bit of excess that, that exists. And then that's going to go inside the top of the can. Perfect. Next, that inside piece needs to be cut to length. I'm going to uh, hold the bottom up to the top. I want to make sure the, the bottom doesn't block the jets. And I want to cut that bottom piece so it fits right with the bottom of the uh, bottom part of the can right there. So I'm going to hold them carefully and mark where I need to cut. So we're just going to dry fit that again one last time to make sure we have a very good fit. And we're going to compare that with the bottom of the can. That looks like that's going to work perfectly. And before we get carried away, I'm going to cut a couple vents in the bottom of the inside wall just with a little V cut. These little vents are very important because they're going to allow fuel that we put in the middle of the can to leak in between the two walls of the can. There, that's good. Two or three little vents like that are all you need to make this work. Okay, we'll fit them together. And the last task is to fit the bottom of the can inside the top of the can. So what we're going to have to do is crimp the can. We're going to use those long nose pliers to crimp the can. Just grab the can and uh, twist and then advance the pliers f a little further on and twist again until you get a nice crimping pattern around the rim of the can. Now this next part can be a little challenging. We're going to try and put the bottom of the can inside the top of the can. 
Sometimes this goes quickly, sometimes it takes a little bit of patience. Just try and keep the two parts level and work your way around the can until you have success. Right about there. Now, inevitably you get a little divot. And this is why the top of the can needs to be long enough to reach right to the very end of the bottom of the can. So one of the things I learned in this process is that the top part of the can that fits over the bottom part needs to be long enough to go right to the bottom edge of the can. Um, that's because the metal's very, very fine. It's going to crimp a little bit more than you expect. Uh, I've made a couple of these um, with a short top and they both had uh, crimping occur, which made a little tiny hole right here um, that really creates a, a, an extra jet, a superfluous jet, if you will and uh, fuel's gonna leak out of there, it'll light, and it's not what you want. So um, make, your, make your top long enough to connect right to the bottom where the can won't crimp. So I'm gonna fix that crimp hole with a little bit of JB Weld and uh, probably some foil tape around the seam just to uh, ensure that no, uh, no fuel leaks out. The top of the stove is very, very hot. As you can see, it's burnt the uh, paint off above the jets, and there's some discoloration below, but I believe the bottom of the can will uh, stay cool enough that uh, foil tape will be fine. Let's light this thing up. You want to make sure that you use the right kind of alcohol in these stoves. I'm using methyl hydrate, which is mostly me pure methanol. Um, you can find that in most hardware stores in the paint section. Uh, it's sold as a solvent. That's a, it's a great source. It's quite a cheap source. Another good source is a heat gas line antifreeze. If you're in the United States, that's commonly available there. Um, you want to choose the yellow bottle, not the red bottle, um, because that's the one that has methanol. You also don't really want to use rubbing alcohol in these stoves. It will burn, but it's going to be uh, smoky and sooty and clog up your jets and uh, create a bit of a stink and a mess. So we've put some methanol into our stove. It's leaked into the inner wall, formed a bit of a reserve, which we have lit on fire. The heat from that burning flame is going to cause vapor to form in the inner wall of the stove. That vapor will escape through your jets and ignite. In daylight conditions, the flame is almost invisible. Once you have a full bloom, you can add a cooking pot. The pot will actually extinguish the flame in the internal uh, part of the can, and only the jets will burn, giving you longer burn time. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about how to make an alcohol stove out of a beer can. Uh, go try it. It's a lot of fun.